In the recent years, demand for rosé has been steadily climbing. A lot of people dismiss it as a poolside sip or a simple wine. However, lately in recent years, I found myself enjoying rosés a lot more. They're incredibly food friendly, especially with a variety of dishes like spicy dishes, which I absolutely love thanks to the acidity. In general, there are three ways to make rosé. First, you have crushed rosé. This is if producers primarily focus on rosé. They grow the grapes in the vineyard to make rosé. They crush, they press the grapes, and then instantly, there they go. They have the juice to make rosé. The next method is called the sagne method, which is the French term for bleeding. That's when you have a red wine producer that wants to make the red wines a little more concentrated. So before the fermentation process, the producers have the grape juice that's going to become wine. What they do is they bleed off a little bit of this juice to make the red wine juice more concentrated. That juice that gets bled off gets turned into rosé. Sometimes these have a little bit more color. The third way to make rosé is if you blend white wine and red wine. This is generally frowned upon, except in champagne where it's actually allowed. You can blend white grapes with red grapes to make rosé champagne. Although a lot of people think of rosé as a simple and expensive wine, it's actually technically the most difficult wine to make. Producers have to be careful with the exposure to oxygen so the rosé doesn't turn brown in color. These days people want rosé with less and less color so they gotta be careful with the skin contact. A lot of the deliciousness of rosé wines are based on their fresh fruit flavors so you gotta be really careful during the winemaking process. I've had winemakers before tell me when they're going to a country and they're checking out a new producer, new winemaker, they often pay attention to the rosé because that tells them what kind of winemaker that producer is. In the recent years the Provencal style of rosé has become more popular. It's a little bit crisper. It has some creamy notes. I almost think of strawberry or creamsicle watermelon when I taste those wines. I actually have a Provencal rosé here and I have an inexpensive alternative to Provencal rosé and I also have some darker rosés from several different countries. Here today I have rosés that range anywhere from 15 bucks all the way to $45. I'll blind taste these wines and during the reveal I'll talk about the country, the style. You ready? I'm ready. Let's get tasting. And we're back for rosé all day, tasting on my Gabriel Glass Standard Editions. Love these glasses, universal glasses. I'll leave it in the description box. You know the drill. Helps the channel if you purchase with that link, so thanks a lot. We have mostly crushed rosés, although I think there is one Sanye here. We have some darker rosés here too, which I'm pretty excited about. Number one is pretty dark. Again, the desk is a little bit crowded. Don't have a lot of space here. Let's go with wine number one here. A little bit darker, more of an oxidative style rosé. It's not so based on fresh fruit. More mushrooms, it says like dried strawberry, cherry, even like a, a sagey type of note. Oh, no, mint type of note. This is not the type of rosé that everybody's going to love. A lot of people that drink rosé like things that are a little bit fresher, a little bit easier. This has a touch of tan. I actually like darker rosés. You'll see them a lot on Puglia on the heel of Italy. I'm made out of Negro Amaro. Also on Cyprus, the, the rosés are actually a little bit more tannic. They go with the, the food a little bit. When you have darker rosés, I want it to be almost act like a light red wine. I want a little more complexity. It's a little bit shorter for my taste. It's solid, but not uh, not blowing me away. Let's move on to number two here. Number two on contrast is like pink, 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 like watermelon Jolly Rancher type color. Strawberry, watermelon strawberry, that's kind of what you get. You know, when you have these layer rosés, sometimes I want a little bit cream, I want some more complexity. This is fruity, crispy, it's not offensive, it's pretty well made. It's just not the most exciting rosé in the bunch. Solid, standard, just kind of going through the motions type of deal, so I was hoping to show you that rosé can be great wine, so <laughs> let's hope that I don't disappoint. Let's move on to wine three. Uh, like in color but not not super not super light but has a little bit of color now this has a little bit of fire kind of like a mineral type note it smells like high quality stuff it's the mineralness kind of sticks out more than the strawberry the watermelon flavors this here has a little bit of length it's not the most complex rosé in this lighter style that I've ever tasted however if you want something crispy lighter I think this is something that I would really like the acidity stretches out the palate a little bit not too bad let's move on to number four which is also very pinky in color a lot of watermelon, strawberry. This even has some creamsicle notes coming out. Three and four are really similar. I think that four's a little bit longer. Here's the thing, I like acid, so I'm drawn a little bit more to number four. 
Sometimes people can find acidity to be a little bit too sharp, so I think they might want to go for number three. Five is super dark, really, really dark, almost like a light red wine in color. Oh, has like some banana earth, strawberry type notes, a little bit of garrigue. It just smells a little more concentrated red berry. Five is incredibly long, has palette presence. I don't think that everybody's gonna love this type of rosé, but this is pretty serious wine. There are, There is length, there's layers, there's complexity. It's almost like these other three were almost like lemon water, and this is more kind of like a, and this is more like a whole milk heavy cream type mouthfeel, if you know the difference, so it's pretty full in body. I think that's pretty good. Let's move on to number six. Number six, this is zero classified as rosé, but this almost looks like a white wine in color. This really smells like campfire. Mineral, it's like more mineral driven. It is not fruity at all. Just pure mineral flavors. Mineral fire length, a little bit of lemon. Whatever it is though, I think it's really good. <laughs> really good. That's uh, Again, this is all palate preference, complexity. Number six is the type of wine that I really like. People just getting into wine, I don't think are gonna like it so much. Let's move on here to number seven. Also one of the darker rosés. A lot of strawberry, lots and lots of strawberry flavors. Almost like an overripe strawberry. My family, our farmers, we used to have a U-Pick strawberry farm, so I'm used to those some of those flavors, tasting what strawberries are if they've been in the sun too long after you pick them. A little bit of pepper, smells good. That is really good. This has a little bit of tannin, which actually has quite a bit of tannin. They start to come up and they start to bite. Complex. This is something that I really want to drink. The acidity is a little bit lower. It's going to be easier for some people to drink if they can deal with the flavors. This is, again, all preference. This is what I like. I'm really impressed with whatever that is. I think that's really, really good. Okay, let's move on to number eight here. Also a lighter, more pinky color rosé. Oh, intense. Now this is what I want a high quality, lighter rosé to be. It's explosive strawberry, creamsicle, watermelon, almost a Jolly Ranch, almost a green apple Jolly Rancher also thrown in there. <laughs> this really does have a green apple Jolly Rancher type of flavor. It's long, it's staying in the palate. I, I think it's really good. I'm actually pretty surprised here when we started out. A couple of the wines weren't super exciting to me. I was thinking, uh-oh, uh-oh, I'm starting to be a little bit worried here. The first two wines were the wines that actually were not as impressive to me. The first one was darker, richer, had this mint type of flavor. I think that a lot of people aren't gonna like this style of wine. Even me with darker rosés, I thought it was okay. It wasn't a faulty wine, but I didn't prefer it. I think it gave it 85 points. Let's take a look here. This is the Machmel. This is the Cuvée Francesca from Lebanon. 2020. This is made from the grape Aranarnoa, which is a French grape. It exists in Lebanon, about 20 bucks. I think that this is one of the wines that might be a Sagne, a little bit darker in color. It's okay. I don't think I would recommend that wine, to be honest. Next up, number two. Crispy, easy drinking rosé. I gave it 86 plus points. It had watermelon, strawberry flavors. It was just something that, you know, I don't know. I think it's an inexpensive, you know, poolside sipper. Let's take a look. <laughs> this is the Provencal Rosé, the Commandery de la Bargemon. This is the Cote d'Ex en Provence, 2022, 15 bucks. I mean, this is a very popular wine. I can see why people get it. I get 86 plus. In Provence, you have two big appellations. You have Cote de Provence, and then that's the biggest appellation. Then you have Cote d'Ex en Provence, which is this. I think it's a crowd pleaser. Uh, for me, my palate, I'm looking for great wine. I don't think it's great. I think it's easy drinking. Number three, mineral strawberry. It was long. So here, here's the thing. Remember, three and four, I said, were very similar in terms of flavor. The strawberry, the watermelon. However, four had a little bit more acidity. That's why I preferred it. Number three... I think is very good. Mineral, the mineral stuff really comes out. 88 points, I would recommend this rosé. This is the exact type of wine you bring to a summer barbecue. If you're a wine geek, you wanna drink something with a little more complexity, but you want something that's friendly for a lot of people, let's take a look at what it is. This is the Sojourn Rosé of Pinot Noir from Sonoma Coast, 25 bucks. Pinot Noir rosé usually is a little bit distinctive for me. I guess it didn't pop, it didn't pick out that was rosé here. Crushed rosé, excellent, 
wanted to serve Pinot Noir. Again, very friendly wine. I liked it a lot, 88 points. I think it's worth checking out. Number four was very similar here. However, remember I said it had a little bit more acidity. That's why I preferred it. I actually gave it 89 points. I thought it was very good. Something that I want to drink and look what this is. This is San Salvatore 1988 Vettere. This is from Campania, Italy. Made out of the grape Alianico, 21 bucks. Uh, I think this producer I like a lot. Also makes buffalo mozzarella in Campania. 21 bucks, this is made from the grape Alianico. Alianico is a grape that has high acid, a lot of tannin, can have a lot of color. So you have to be really skilled to make this type of rose. This is widely available. I think it's very good. Worth checking out, especially if you want some acidity. These next four all scored above 90 points. So we're getting into some really, really high quality wine. I have two here tied for 90 plus. I'll start with number seven. Overripe, a strawberry flavor. 90 plus for me, however, a lot of you, I don't think you're gonna like it because it has some tannin, some, a significant amount of tannin. This really reminds me of Cypriot type rosé. I don't have a rosé from Cyprus here. Has tannin, so it can go with a variety of dishes, meat as well as fish. I thought it was really lovely, 90 plus points. Super famous one. This is the Domaine de la Mordorée. This is the Tavel La Reine de Bois. This is from the south of France. Here's the thing though, 45 bucks. Thought it was really good wine. Tavel is an appellation right across from Chateau de Pop. Tavel is dedicated to rosé, meatier, darker type rosés. They've gained popularity in recent years. This is 2021. Rosé is usually thought of as a wine that can't age. Tavels, you actually can lay down for a little bit and they can gain some complexity. I thought this was very good, the tannins were good. Particular type of wine, not to everybody's flavor. And this is one of the benchmarks in terms of Tavel. 90 plus points, I thought it was very good. Tie for 90 plus points. Number eight, strawberry green apple. Just the typical lighter style rose that I think a lot of you are gonna like. I think for most of you here, most people that watch the channel, this is the rosé I would highly recommend that a lot of people are going to love. Uh, easy to drink, I think it's gonna be affordable. Let's take a look. This is an appellation I scream about. This is the Chateau Oris Corbier. This is the rosé 2022 Grenache and Cinso. 15 bucks. I kick and scream. Corbier Rosé is a great, inexpensive alternative to Rosé from Provence. Sometimes you're not gonna be able to find them as often. I just got back from a trip in the Languedoc, Russia, where I tasted through a lot of Corbier Rosé. I did that a few years ago as well, and I was impressed. 15 bucks, Grenache, Cinso. I think the two grapes that are excellent when it comes to Rosé, a lot of Provencal Rosés are made out of that, as well as Morvedra. Excellent wine. I think if you're in Europe, you could even get this for like six bucks. I think it was very good. Okay, the top two here. The top two with an asterisk because these are the two styles in terms of darker and lighter rosés I think people are gonna like. These are a little more quirky wise. I don't think everybody's gonna love these type of wines, especially wine number six where it didn't even look like a rosé. It was all mineral, it was fiery. It had length, I gave it 91 points. I thought it was outstanding and look what we have here. This is the Maggiore Etna Rosato Contrada Volpare 2020 Nerello Mascalesi, 36 bucks. From Mount Etna, grows on a volcano, the tallest active volcano in Italy, in Sicily. This is also a crushed rosé. I actually think that Etna wines, the rosés always, or the rosés or rosato in Italian, always stick out. But here's the thing, 36 bucks, how many people want to pay that kind of money for a rosato? Uh, I think is outstanding. Every Etna rosato I've ever tasted, I've been really impressed with. Etna Bianco's Etna Rosso sometimes can be disappointing to me. Very excited about it. I thought it was excellent. The top wine to me, I thought it was the Tavel, 91 plus points. It was a darker meteor rose. It had length, it had structure. And here's a little bit of upset, 91 plus points. I thought this was very good. And look what we have here. This is the Planches Faros Opal from Croatia, 2021, made from Plavitz Mali. Here's the thing, you can only kind of get this in Croatia. It's around 16 bucks, pretty dark. Opal is a style of rose from Dalmatia. I think this is a Sanye rose. Traditional rose that they drank in the summer. I think this is going excellent with me it has complexity the only thing though is availability it's gonna be hard to get but 91 plus points i wasn't expecting much i thought it was the tavel outstanding wine so tell me do you drink a lot of rosés what kind of price point do you stick to when drinking rosé drop it in the comments below see ya